Here's everything that you need to know about Berserker, the new class, all the crafting recipes, items, how they work, and everything else. If you want to know all the different builds and how you can play her, uh, I'll be uploading every single day, so make sure to subscribe to the channel. And I'll also be live a lot, uh, trying to speedrun this from bronze to master, so you know, you could tune in to the stream. But first things first, the bag. So each class has their own unique bag with a special effect. And Berserker, I think, has a really cool one. Uh, once your health drops below 50%, you enter Battle Rage for 5 seconds. So you basically trigger an effect once you drop low. Battle Rage is basically that the items inside of this bag, so only inside, things that are in your other bags do not count, they will trigger 30% faster. So it's kind of like a better glove on all of your items inside. And you take 20% less damage, so you have more survivability. So there's a lot of synergies with this class where you want to trigger Battle Rage or Battle Rage triggers more items and synergizes heavily so you want to drop low that you want to reduce the damage you take so you don't instantly die and then you make good use of the speed that you have and also you start with a forging hammer now this is the only class that starts with a unique now this is an item uh, that you cannot find in the shop you cannot buy this you cannot find this anywhere else except for your starting item and that is what makes berserker so cool as well because this is used for a lot of different things now the weapon itself isn't great if you take a look it deals 1 dps 2 to 5 damage every 3.5 seconds so very slow cooldown it does have zero stamina so you have to play with this all game but it having zero stamina means that it's not too big of a trade-off like you can run any weapons with it still and the accuracy is 95 also more than fine but one thing this does mean is that you're worth against shields and spikes because this is a melee weapon so by default you'll have one more weapon uh, with zero stamina in your bag so you will stem out faster against shields and you will be taking more spike damage so that is one thing to keep in mind it's kind of like playing a dagger right if you're playing reaper or ranger you play one extra dagger with the weapons you have those same downsides kind of apply here. I forgot to mention, this also deals an additional plus one damage for Empower. So in case you go with an Empower heavy build or you gain a bunch of Empower from different sources, this will get double damage from that Empower source. Not incredibly useful because it's still very slow and it's, it's very extra. But just so you know, it, it could do so like a bit more damage in the mid game. When it comes to items, let's first take a look at the class items because these are the most important things to understand about, you know, how to shape your run, what you can build towards, and the other items will make more sense then. The first one is a brass knuckles. Now this item just as a weapon isn't insane either. It has zero stamina, so you can play this with any weapons. Uh, it only deals 2.5 DPS though, not very high, uh, but it has a slower cooldown, 1.6 compared to the hammer. Uh, and accuracy is 90, but you don't pick it for any of these stats. Instead, on hit, it has a 30% chance to stun. So it's like a pretty fast hammer that way. Hammer has a super slow cooldown, but it has a 50% chance to stun. This only has 30%, um, but it has a chance to stun for 0.5 seconds. Also, this and the start items, the stars, as you can see, is kind of like a rectangle over the top. Gains 5% accuracy and 5% crit chance. Uh, which isn't insane, it's 5% is not much, but hey, if it keeps increasing that on hits, uh, the 30% just, it, it's a bit RNG heavy, this doesn't seem that good if you just look at this. Uh, also, during Battle Rage, this triggers 50% faster. So, what I can see happen with Brass Knuckles is that once you drop into Battle Rage, uh, below 50%, this goes even faster, you put it in the bag as well, so you get the additional 20%, maybe some gloves, and then you have, I don't know, some daggers around it. Um, and then suddenly you can start maybe stunning a lot and then all of your crit chance and accuracy increases and that's maybe you have different sources of stunning as well that's how I can see this you know kind of working but of all of the uniques honestly I feel like this is the weakest and it needs like the most synergies to make work but I could be wrong you know uh, things can evolve things can change I haven't played enough yet with this class to actually know but we'll see now the next one I think is super interesting this is I mean the pattern I'm kind of cutting it off but I, I can show it here in uh, the video or in the game that I played but it's like a bunch of diamonds and in the middle there are stars basically wolf emblem once you have this you can see wolves in the shop so it's kind of like box of riches or one of those items deck of cards that allows you to see other cards in the shop this allows you to see wolves in the shop there's three kinds of wolves that I'll show in a second but basically when you have at least five empower so same requirement as great sword you have a 30 percent chance to resist debuffs so it can kind of be like a poison ivy wolf emblem uh, it's a bit of the like the poison ivy of um, ranger but then in berserker even though you don't inflict poison yourself you just resist it you resist any sort of debuff so it's kind of nice in some metas also the stored weapons so the weapons on like that line in the middle they gain 10 percent crit chance for each pet in the diamonds they start with 10 percent and for each pet they gain an additional plus 10 percent so you could stack these up have your items crit this way in berserker because ranger is still the class that mostly identifies with crit has the easiest way to find acorn colors and lucky clovers that with arrow uh, so this is a way that you can just get a bunch of crit chance on your weapons and 
Of course, the wolves that you get offered in the shop aren't terrible either. So we're going to take a look at those right now. So ignore these three things on the top right now. The first one that we have is the Courage Puppy. Uh, 5 to 7 damage, so 1.5 DPS. Not great because the cooldown is so slow. It's 4 seconds. Uh, the damage is pretty high though. Also 0 stamina uh, and 95% accuracy. It is a melee weapon, so it's pretty interesting that some pets are just considered pets. Uh, but these wolves are considered melee weapons, so they will trigger spikes and shields and stuff like that. They also deal plus 2 damage for each pet around it so the more wolves you have the more damage this will start dealing and you know it's kind of a bonus so i don't think you're using a bunch of courage puppies to uh, as your main damage source but of course it's a puppy that buffs the wolf emblem and will buff the other puppies because they also have stars around them the other one is the wisdom puppy uh, every four seconds again same slow cooldown you gain eight armor and cleanse a cold very interesting that it only cleanses a cold but we're gonna see more cold definitely uh, with Pyromancer that I'll show off in the next video. But this one triggers 15% faster for each pet. So instead of um, increasing damage or something like that or increasing armor, this one can speed up with other, you know, puppies or <laughs> wolves around it. So you can actually have this go down a lot, get a bunch more armor. This is more of like the defensive part. So you have the, the offensive wolf, the defensive wolf, and then you have the power puppy. Uh, every four seconds, same slow cooldown. You randomly gain a luck or a regen or empower. This one seems like the worst one because it's so random, right? Like you're gaining luck, you can't convert it into crit, it would just be for accuracy uh, in Berserker. A random regen is terrible unless you're playing like Bloodthorn or Hunger Blade or something like that. Uh, and Empower, sure, Empower I think has like the most synergy uh, with Berserker so far. But it triggers 10% faster for each pet around it. Uh, this is 15%, this is only 10%, so it's less fast, it's slower. Yeah, it just doesn't seem good. So this one seems pretty bad, this one is just defensive, this one is offensive. But the puppies, like the wolves don't seem great, but of course I don't know how it will feel once you have all of them like stacked together. A bunch of them like working with each other and also buffing, you know, the class item that you took. and getting crit on something so yeah this one seems fun to try i don't know how good it will be depends on how relevant crit will be for this class i guess or the resisting of debuffs uh, against some metas then we have anvil now this one is super sick basically you can see the star pattern around it and the diamond on top uh, once an item is crafted generate a flame flames i'm gonna show what it is in a second but it is actually a pyromancer um item it's something that is more for that class so it, it doesn't show up for for berserker but it's very interesting that you can actually generate flames now in this class. Also for each starred crafted item, so when you craft something in the slots around it, the diamond here on top uh, weapon gains plus 2 damage and uses 5% less stamina. So while recording this video I was actually wrong, it is not when you craft items that you permanently upgrade the weapon up top, it is just when there's crafted items around the anvil that you get the bonus effects on the item in the little diamond. So it is not permanent scaling, it is just if you have crafted items around it you're gonna get bonus stats on the weapon that you choose to put there which is less good than i thought it originally was so dude imagine if it's like a falcon blade and you have like a bunch of very small and cheap crafting recipes that you're constantly completing around it i don't know yet what that would be uh, actually with the hammer forging hammer is used to craft things so i guess you could use this in combination with other items to just trigger this a lot uh, also the last stamina usage is really big because now you could you know have to, if you play falcon blade for example you have to worry less about it hitting into shields so it's very cool, it's a way to just firmly scale an item and make it use less stamina and actually benefit from crafting, which is interesting. And so let me show you what a flame is. So this is the flame, uh, the pyromancer item, basically start a battle, you gain a heat. That's literally it, it's a cheap common item that gives you a heat. So you could sell those back for money or you can just play with a bit of heat in Berserker. Then we have a Deerwood Guardian, damage taken reduced by 10%, so you just take less damage. From the gate which is insane battle rage lasts 0.5 seconds longer for each star nature item now the star pattern as you can see up top it's like it's insane it's ridiculous i can't fully put it on the screen uh so for each nature item that you put in those stars battle rage will last longer so you can benefit more from its effect of taking less damage the speed and some other items that we will see that benefit from battle rage also every second during battle rage you will heal for seven and gain two mana so this would work well in case you need mana for something if you're playing a mana build on berserker which so far as i've seen there's not that many mana synergies that you would have to go for or that you want to go for unless you want to try magic 
magic wand with it. And the healing is just okay. Basically, this is more of a defensive item. It makes you live longer with reduced damage with the increased battle rage and with the healing during it. So I don't know exactly what kind of build you would want to play this with, but we'll see how things evolve. The last one is Shaman Mask. This one looks super fun as well. It offers runes in the shop. So like this one offering wolves, you now get runes, which I'll show in a second. Uh, sort of Battle, it gives you a look for each socketed gemstone. So if you put gems on stuff, I think runes will also count as gemstones. Uh, you gain luck. Luck also mainly used for accuracy in Berserker, but luck is also used for something else because every three seconds you use two luck to gain five random buffs. So if you could speed this up somehow, that would be nice, but you basically just stack a lot of random buffs and buffs if you can generate luck, uh, which you can with this, but in other ways as well. You will lose accuracy, so keep that in mind, but it's, it's kind of a fun way to play a random buff build, I guess. Looking at the runes, which are basically gemstones. Now, these are incredibly strong. We're gonna start with the Badger rune uh, on hit, Figures 3% faster. So put this in a weapon, and the weapon is gonna go faster and faster and faster. Uh, it's like a way better burning coal, it's way better than heat, because it's kind of like turning any weapon into a chunk, uh, essentially, because it, it will just keep going faster on itself. It does not make everything faster like heat will, but this still seems insane. If you put this in armor, during battle rage, reduce damage taken by 7, which is massive damage taken by seven reduced like if someone just deals seven damage to you constantly you're gonna take zero damage during battle rage you can basically be invulnerable so badger rune in uh, armor if you have two of them seems absolutely disgusting you might just not take any damage during those five seconds of battle rage or increase battle rage if you can increase it somehow but yeah this seems absolutely like incredibly strong uh, and if you put it in a backpack items use 10 percent less stamina also insane if you want to run multiple weapons or great sword or things like that uh, less stamina usage. Like, Badger Rune seems really strong no matter what you do with it. I think in armor it's the strongest, on weapon it's fine. Uh, in backpack it's great, but in, in backpack it's almost kind of like a yellow gem. Yellow gem gives you 10% extra stamina gain, which I think is definitely less than items using 10% less stamina, maybe depending on the item, but yeah. Then we have the Elephant Rune. If you put it in a weapon on hit, you have a 25% chance to stun. Here again, we see the stun synergies. I mean, you have to play uh, the mask with it, you cannot play the brass knuckles, which has the stun synergy that we talked about because it increases uh, all, all your accuracy and crit for stuns, things like that, and it can stun itself. So it's a bit weird that Elephant Rune does not synergize with brass knuckles because it cannot exist in the same backpack, but you can still pull off stun stuff. 25% is not very high, uh, and a stun for half a second, it's, it's kind of average, uh, but it has a cooldown of three seconds just so you can't permanently stun because i assume you could you know again putting this on like a fast weapon like falcon blade or claws of attack i could see this getting you know maybe out of control you put this in armor so the battle 40 percent chance to resist debuffs for four seconds now 40 percent. this is just coin flipping right like you start the battle and you're just praying for the 40 percent if you do though resisting all debuffs for four seconds you can literally full counter a poison reaper let's say someone puts like a hundred poison on you in the first couple seconds all of that is debuffed. It resists all debuffs for four seconds. It's absolutely insane in case you're in a debuff meta. Like, this will just can instantly win. Of course, you will need a couple elephant runes because relying on 40% isn't super reliable. Uh, but still, this seems like it could be just. It just insta wins some matchups, I guess. Even against blind builds. If blind becomes popular or like cold builds, uh, this is really good against it. If you put it in a backpack, your maximum health is increased by 40 kind of whatever right it's the same as half a hard container or like double the uh vampire amulet the blood amulet so just in case you want 40 health you can put it in a backpack then we have the hawk rune uh if you put it in a weapon it has increased crit chance by 15 percent and critical damage by 15 percent so you just have more crit chance and your crits deal more damage uh, 15 percent is not insane though again maybe you can combine it with other ways that you can boost crit chance on your weapons uh, but yeah this doesn't seem insane you put it in armor you have 40 percent chance to resist blind now the difference is that this resists everything for four seconds but it's only a 40 percent chance uh, this is during the entire fight so in case people are only spamming blind it's better to run hawk runes in your in your um, armor because then you have during the entire fight a 40 percent chance to resist blind which i guess is better and if you put it in a backpack every four seconds inflict one blind every four seconds one blind seems incredibly slow incredibly bad 
uh, probably the worst effect of the runes. Now, let's say you're playing a blind build, sure, you can run a couple of these in your backpack, but honestly, these runes seem so incredibly strong. Like, if you look at Badger and Elephant, um, mainly, their effects can literally just win you on the spot, like, reducing the damage taken to almost zero, or speeding up a weapon like that, have, being able to resist debuffs, like, for four seconds at the start, maybe the stun, um, yeah, it all seems incredibly strong. So I do think that this is going to be one of the stronger unique items that you can play. The Shaman Mask. Uh, and then with some random buffs with it, seems really good. So yeah, overall, uh, these all seem very interesting. They all lead to very different game plans, which I think is super fun. You're going to see a lot of variety in Berserker. And I don't know what is going to be the strongest one or the best one. Some of these definitely seem more like a support to your backpack. Because Berserker, as we're going to see right now, has some items that I think are good enough to just win already. First things first, we have Dragon Claws. This is when you combine normal gloves together with the starting hammer that you have. Uh, and then you create these. So a lot of crafting recipes that you will see are just existing items. And you smash it with the hammer and then you get new items. So it has two stars on the side as well it has 10 percent to resist poison from the start so it's like free poison resists for some reason during battle rage so again one should drop at 50 percent the start items trigger 40 percent faster so it's faster than vamp gloves faster than normal gloves but only one should drop low so you got to keep in mind that during the start of the fight you're not going to get any speed buffs so you got to make that decision of okay do i want to go fast at the start for scaling or for whatever you want or for burst or do i just try and set up and do some things until battle rage hits and then i go sicko mode in that case these claws are better uh, i think they're pretty good uh, i think they're pretty all right you just gotta make sure that you get more value out of them than just normal gloves then you have spiked collar this is an item that you could just find in the shop it's a legendary uh battle rage lasts two seconds longer so you can stack these you can basically increase your battle rage for much longer and then all of the effects that we saw obviously will trigger for longer uh, so this is in case you're hard relying on your backpack effect this is incredibly good also once you enter battle rage you're gonna gain a spike uh, seems pretty extra. I don't think you're gonna play a bunch of these just to get like free spikes or whatever. Uh, but hey, in case you're playing a spike build, another spike. It's basically like a delayed tusk, which is not good. Then we have Axe. Now this weapon, actually it feels really strong. I played with it a little bit and it's disgusting. Like the stamina is pretty high, it's 0.9, so you could run a second weapon with it, but you will stim out. The damage is 3 DPS, which is already pretty high for an early game weapon. It's a rare though. Accuracy is not great, it's 85%, and the cooldown is 1.5. Now the cooldown is just one, uh, 0.1 second uh, slower than a wood sword, which is important because on hit it gains one damage. So it's basically like a magic torch already. It scales one damage itself though, so magic torch would scale other items as well. But magic torch also needs mana. Magic torch needs a lot to craft, needs mana, needs a lot of things. This you just play and it starts scaling. Like if you find this early, this felt, th this, this DPS goes up so fast. Uh, yeah, definitely think one of the stronger early game weapons that you can run. At least that's what I think right now. That's what I I have held. We'll see if uh, maybe some other things take its place. And there's another reason why this weapon will be good, but you will see that later. Then you have Dragon Skin Boots. That's why they renamed like uh, the old Dragon Skin Boots to Leather Boots. It's because these are the Dragon Skin Boots now. Again, it's just boots combined with the Forging Hammer. You have a 25% chance to resist cold. So just like the gloves, you get a random resist effect and this time it is cold. Battle Rage entered, cleanse free random debuffs, gain empower and aid armor. So it's kind of the same as normal boots. Once you drop low, you gain the empower and the armor. But in this case, you also clans random debuffs just more bonus effects which makes it worth upgrading then we have dragon skill armor this is leather armor forged with the hammer again once you enter battle rage you gain 40 armor so uh, leather armor gets 45 this is less or also delayed but during battle rage damage taken reduced by 15 percent i think it's better to not play leather armor or any other armor effects because that way you delay your battle rage a lot of these synergies rely on you dropping to half so you got to find a way that you drop low first then everything is gonna trigger then you gain that extra armor to give you that buffer so you don't die right away uh, and you take less damage from this as well so it's this seems insane if you're playing any sort of battle rage like setup you probably want a couple of these just so you don't die once battle rage is active you delay your battle rage and you go crazy so these were the puppies that you can get now you can also upgrade them so with the forging hammer i didn't show this earlier but you can upgrade the puppies uh, if you go with the, the puppy that just deals damage, basically what it does is the DPS is just increased to 2 DPS, stats stay the same. It still gains plus 2 damage for each pet around it, uh, but it cannot be blocked or triggered by spikes. So it basically turns the melee weapon into a ranged weapon, uh, even though it's still 
a wolf or a puppy, just know that it's not going to stim you out or trigger shields or trigger spikes, which is kind of a bonus. It doesn't still make this good. Then you have Armored Wisdom Puppy. It gains you 12 armor instead of 8. It still cleanses a cold, but it increases the armor gain by 1. So it gives you more and more armor over time very slowly. That is the main benefit. And the last one, uh, the cooldown is slower. So from 4 seconds, it goes to 3.5. Still gives you a luck or a regen or an empower. But it also triggers now 20% faster for food items around it. So instead of just uh, having other puppies around it or other pets, you can also trigger it a lot faster now with food around it. Still not great though. <laughs> I would still not really want to play this. But yeah, just so you know, you can upgrade them makes them better then you have a cheese cheese is a legendary food item every four seconds so not a great cooldown again but you can speed it up with other food items you gain 10 maximum health and a random buff so gingerbread jerry is crying in the corner but yeah this is a way that you can gain more max health in case you can benefit of it somehow uh, and random buff which one random buff every four seconds not good this does not seem like a great item the main reason why cheese might be a great item is because of all this goober you see at the bottom here that i'll show in a second then we have chain whip now this looks badass it's basically combining just a foreign whip with your forging hammer and then it turns into this i don't know how that works the logistics of turning a foreign whip into a chain with a hammer uh but that's how it works basically the dps is still 2.6 which isn't super high stamina cost is one so very high you can't really run other weapons with this unless you have a lot of stamina supply uh, accuracy is pretty low at 85 and the cooldown is still 2.5 which is not great it deals plus one damage so instead of spikes like the whip it deals plus one damage for each buff you removed from your opponent uh and you're wondering okay how do i remove buffs well on hit it removes two random buffs so in case we are in a buff heavy meta which i mean most rangers run luck i think most classes always have some buffs active uh, again really good against but foreign because uh, it removes the vamp the regen the spikes so on hit it will remove two buffs it will gain plus two damage you can also remove buffs in different ways so in case you find other ways to remove buffs this will skill a lot on that as well during battle rage you additionally heal for eight so per hit it's also gonna heal you for eight if you're in battle rage so this seems like a pretty strong weapon in a lot of situations uh i don't know if it will win end games maybe against the right uh setup that you're facing seems situational though so again not something that you probably will always win with but in the ride context if you're facing a lot of the same balls this could be absolutely disgusting maybe it's kind of like ripsaw blade ripsaw blade is often played with like magic torch and other additional things to win the game not just relying on ripsaw blade itself to win maybe chain whip is similar maybe it's just a very strong weapon that has real good counter potential do you play it with magic torch with other items that can help you uh, close out that win or skill more the only issue is just going to be the stamina and then you have the double axe now this is why i said that the axe was going to be a good pickup because double axe is just two of these axes combined um this weapon is massive as well if you look at the space it occupies basically the damage is six dps pretty high 6 to 12 cooldown is still 1.5 so pretty fast which is important because again it's gonna scale on every hit the stamina cost is 1.3 though it's one of the weapons with the highest stamina i've seen of course other than great sword uh 1.3 this needs already like stamina help if it's your single weapon and accuracy is still 85 so not uh insane on hit it scales two damage though so instead of one damage on hit it scales two twice as fast as the other weapon and once you enter battle rage trigger an extra attack damage gain increase to three do you scale even more deal even more damage it's absolutely disgusting this looks like it could be a win condition on itself i feel like you could just run axe into double axe and then go all in on this double axe a bunch of defensive tools go for battle rage and then just win off the scaling of this weapon alone i don't know yet though but it looks like this this looks incredibly strong then we have probably some of the most fun shit uh busted blade this is combining great sword uh, or smashing it with your hammer and then you get a greater great sword that's even bigger than your wild and streams can imagine it deals 50 to 60 damage, so even more. Stamina is the same, it's still 5, so 1 stamina per second. Accuracy is 95, not bad. Cooldown still 5 seconds. Uh, but it does some different things now with Empower and how it reduces its stamina. So it deals plus 3 damage for every Empower, which seems very extra. I don't think you want to spam a bunch of Empower just to get more damage on this thing. Maybe you do though, because critting on this class doesn't seem super easy. So without crit damage, it might just be valuable to focus instead of buffing your weapon as much as possible. And during the battle rage, so during you dropping low, you decrease the stamina usage to 3 and the cooldown to 3 seconds. So basically, the Empower effect of the normal sword 
is going to trigger automatically once you drop uh, low and trigger battle rage. Now, this could be a bad thing because great sword, you can instantly trigger the empower and instantly get basically the battle rage effect. You can instantly start chopping down your opponent. This, you would have to find a way to drop low fast, which you could probably do. And only then the effect is going to be active and it's not going to be active during the entire fight uh, if your battle rage goes out. You got to kill them during that battle rage. If the five seconds are over, then the effect wears off and you're back to this weapon being at five seconds. So I think it's interesting. It's more consistent than greatsword like it's you don't have to do any sort of setup you don't have to go for an empower setup you don't have to worry about it you just gotta trigger battle rage but i think it has less high roll potential simply because it seems more consistent but yeah less high roll in the end game i don't know yet though it's fun it's probably gonna see play i'm gonna play with it but i don't think it's as crazy as i thought at first i think it is just gonna be kind of similar to a normal greatsword of course don't forget that during battle rage you can trigger other effects so the fact that you do have to wait until you drop low during battle rage you can trigger a bunch of other things that help you live and that help you maybe deal more damage and things like that and speed so maybe you put the gloves on it as well um that might make it better i guess now you have cheese goober i think it looks really funny uh so after five star activations you gain 15 maximum health so you heal for 15 uh basically which is more than a uh, normal goober does and you gain two random buffs uh, so it's just a cheese effect but enhanced to random buffs it's permanent as well like the carrot goober gives you empower but it's only temporary it doesn't stay so two random buffs that are permanent is pretty good i think cheese goobers are actually kind of good and probably might see play the only issue is that you'll have to buy cheese which seems like it will be an expensive item and it will be just not that good to play on itself so you gotta make the sacrifice of playing with a goobert for a while until you find cheese then play that combine it and only then you can play with cheese goobert but i don't think he's a bad goobert at all and of course you're gonna get your own rainbow goobert on this class as well he looks kind of angry i don't think i need to read what this does it's just a bunch of crazy bullshit uh which you will never see because it's super hard to make rainbow goobert right now and that's it for the most part on Berz Zerker. those are all the new items how to craft stuff how it all synergizes and let me know what you think of this class i'll be posting a lot of builds to him again soon on youtube and i'll be playing it live on twitch if you want to watch that but i'm gonna go over pyromancer in the next video hope you enjoy it